Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in this part of the world, welcome to another session of my presentation. This time, the presentation title is Gathering of Data to Perform Applied Studies and the Interpretation of the Results as Applicable to Oil Utilities, Commercial Facilities, and Oil and Gas Facilities. My name is John Kweku Amo Otu and I'm a professional electrical engineer for 30 years and I'm based in the United States of America. Now, on this slide I will talk about the outline of my presentation and uh, first uh, and foremost we'll talk about the standards that govern ACLA studies. Now, as you know that uh, for every system studies uh, that is done in power systems, uh, definitely, there are uh, standards that govern it. So that, that is why Aqua Studies also has its own uh, standards that govern it. In addition to other best practices that are in the industry. The first one is uh, NFPA 70E and uh, the second one is uh, IEEE 1584 and I uh, will dive much deeper into it in the upcoming slides on what each standard require, the requirements of each standard. Next, we'll talk about the reasons for the data collections for our studies. There has to be a reason, and uh, I'll elaborate on what the reasons are. And uh, planning for the data collection, uh, actually, it's also very important as part of uh, the app flash uh, uh, assessment and studies that needs to be done. Next is uh, data collections. What data do we collect and on what equipment? That is very important to have the knowledge of that. You know. So we'll talk about data collection that is done on utility. Uh, that is your source of uh, power to your facility. Next, we'll talk about data collection on cables, transformers, switches, switches, cables, generators, motors, circuit breakers, potential relays. And we'll pivot on applied categorization after basically you have uh, run your simulation studies, uh, how to classify your arc flash uh, based on the incident energy. And we'll talk about the typical components of uh, the typical arc flash uh, report. And finally, if uh, you generate your report and uh, uh, your incident energy is out of uh, the criteria or the requirements, then you need to put in uh, mitigation uh, of uh, the hazards, backlash hazards, and I'll uh, run through uh, what typical mitigation uh, types we have in the industry. Next, I will talk about the standards uh, that govern backlash. Uh, remember, I made mention on uh, the outline of this presentation that uh, uh, standards are very important uh, for every power system simulation and studies that is being done, and. Uh, Arc flash itself, uh, studies and assessment, also has its uh, own standards. So the first one we'll talk about is uh, NFPA 70 e This standard basically governs the administrative piece of arc flash studies. And uh, what it talks about is always uh, you need to, as a utility, as a commercial facility, as an industrial facility, you need to have a procedure in place. You also have to have a uh, policies that govern our flash. That is, uh, um, management has to be aligned with our flash studies and the hazards that come out of our uh, flash studies. Next, uh, you need to have uh, the training piece, training your personnel on our flash studies and uh, the hazards that are associated with our flash. You have to have uh, like an annual training on it. Also, having uh, the training to achieve uh, uh, skilled workers is very important, you know. So, um, the work that has to be done in the field has to be done by skilled workers, workers that are competent to do that work. Also, you need to make sure that uh, the arc flash levels that are printed after an arc flash assessment and simulation studies are printed and posted on the equipment and, matter of fact, uh, the switch gear. Also, you need to have a periodic act flash assessment. And uh, uh, NFPA calls, uh, indicates that uh, every five years, uh, you need to have an act flash assessment. 
and uh, in between that uh, you also need to have an in-house um, assessment you know where basically you go to the code make sure that uh, uh, each uh, equipment has the right uh, labels and uh, also um, employees are uh, following uh, the requirements of the Aquaplan studies and also the training piece of it also you need to have a required PPE now that PPE has to be uh, identified for the various categories of Aquaplash uh, incident energy next is IEEE 1584 right uh, this standard basically governs uh, the studies and uh, simulation of the Aquaplash studies and what does it talk about it talks about uh, uh, the incident energy calculation and to calculate the incident energy in calories per square centimeters what are the parameters that you need one of the parameters you need is the upward current the short circuit current right and also the plot fault clearing time of the protective device that is upstream so for instance a typical protective device that is upstream for a switch here is the incomer, the protective relay that operates the incomer. Now, let's talk about the reasons for the data collection. You know, uh, you have to uh, basically know the underlying reason for the data collection that you need uh, to perform the flash states. Okay, so it helps you to model the actual equipment in the software based on the data that you have collected in the field. So it basically uh, results in a more accurate simulation steps. Remember, you know, when you enter an incorrect data, right? Basically, what, what, does, it, what does it result? It results in an incorrect simulation results and also incorrect labels being printed. And also, uh, think, think about uh, basically the man hours that you spend in collect going to the field to collect an incorrect data performing the simulation studies and printing the labels putting the labels on the equipment that's a lot of uh, man hours and uh, if you have to redo um, the task you know that 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 is that is a no-go right okay so extensive time is also needed so you need to plan for that extensive time in making sure that you are collecting the accurate data and uh, you have to collect uh, the data from your end, all the uh, all the drawings, all the technical data, all the documents, all the OEM um, um, documents, before you embark on the trip uh, to the plant to collect them, um, to verify, collect the data that is um, over there and verify the data that is on the equipment with what is on the print that you have. Matter of fact, this is the perfect time to cross check and make sure that corrections are done. You'll be amazed that sometimes when you go to the field, that is when what is in the field, um, some of the parameters on the field does not match what is uh, on the drawing. So this is a good time to update your drawings to reflect what is in the field. Also, any documents, any technical uh, data you have, like I indicated, must be verified. And uh, also because, uh, you know, Equipment in the field and also matter of fact that some of the plants are uh, undergo modifications throughout their life cycles. Let's say they've added um, another section of a video voltage switch here that has not been updated on the drawings. So this is a good time that when you go to the field and the equipment is there, this is a time to reflect uh, what you have seen in the field on the drawings and get the drawings updated. Next, uh, as we continue on planning for the data collection, right, you need to identify your stakeholders. Right? You need to um, have a, a kickoff meeting, pre kickoff meeting. Let, let me put it that way more of a pre kickoff meeting where you need to agree on the time, come up with an agenda, what your goals are. And some of your stakeholders uh, that you need to identify based on previous experience is a plant manager for the facility. An engineer manager for the facility, an EHS, uh, environmental health and safety personnel, or supervisor, or some, some people call it the HSE, health, safety, and environmental. Then you need to identify your discipline engineer. We have uh, discipline engineers for electrical engineering, instrumental control, 
and the maintenance technician that is going to um, accompany you. Matter of fact, the maintenance technicians and the discipline engineers are the ones that will provide you a lot of uh, information. So you have to rely on such uh, individuals. Also, as you are going to um, a new facility, a new plant, right? You are new to that facility. So it is very important that you coordinate. Matter of fact, uh, the plant safety supervisor is going to enforce that you, you get a plant safety orientation and also the required PPE that you need uh, to perform your data collection. Next now, as we continue on the planning for the data collections, right? Okay, so uh, the best time that uh, based on uh, uh, industry uh, practice or based on uh, information from the industry and also based on my experience is uh, to collect data during a major outage. Let's say if uh, a facility is performing a TNI, and then that is the time to go in and our plan and make an arrangement to go out there and collect that, that data. On the other hand, if uh, a major outage uh, is not possible, you can do it uh, during a minor outage, let's say a um, one day, two day uh, window. Or if that also is not possible, then you can do it uh, whilst uh, the facility is, is uh, running. And uh, if uh, the facility is running, then you have to put in the right uh, or required uh, safety measures. As you are performing the data collections, right, and uh, you open covers, uh, you know, with the support and supervision of uh, the plant main maintenance and the plant uh, safety uh, supervisors and uh, technicians, that is the best time to identify loose connections. Matter of fact, uh, you run into this a lot, okay? And uh, these are some of uh, the devices or equipment that will help you in your data collection. First one is a flashlight. Uh, you'll be amazed that you know a flashlight will help you to basically be able to look at certain areas that are so dark that uh, it becomes very impossible to be able to look at it without a flashlight. You also need a mirror to mag magnify uh, certain prints. You know, some of the prints, uh, you know, as you know, some of this equipment have been in operation for greater years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, right? So. The nameplates and uh, you know the data that uh, might be worn out uh, due to uh, contaminants from the facility, right? You know you can have uh, oil um, uh, collecting on these uh, uh, parameters uh, nameplates uh, that it becomes very difficult for you to read. So uh, you will need a mirror uh, uh, for that matter, you know, to able to magnify those uh, points and for you to be collect uh, that data. You also need a writing board and a paper. And uh, a signed work permit. Yes, yes, exactly. You know, you need a, a work permit uh, that is signed, and you need to basically work it out with the permit uh, receiver, the one that is going to receive the, uh, the permit, and the issuer of uh, uh, the work permit. And uh, of the operations uh, uh, unit uh, are the ones uh, that will work that work out that. And part of the work permit is uh, identifying identification of us um, safety hazard. So you need to come up with a GSA job safety analysis uh, to identify all the hazards that might, you might encounter. You also need your one lines and three lines and schematics and wiring. You also need your equipment technical data. Uh, a lot of times um, when you are coming from your end, uh, bring, uh, bring uh, along um, the technical data that you have from your archives or from your database. And you can also obtain uh, some of uh, the technical data from the plant itself. Uh, if uh, you don't have uh, uh, all of them. Next is uh, a table of uh, protective relay settings. Uh, you can have uh, the one, the original one that was done during the design stage, and you can have one another one that is uh, during the um, testing uh, that was done on this uh, protective release. Matter of fact, uh, the latest one that was uh, done on this uh, protective release. As we continue, next, next we'll talk about the data collection itself. Uh, you know, so. In general, we'll talk about uh, what uh, parameters that needs to be co uh, collected on this uh, equipment. We talk about a uh, um, typical ex example parameter is the uh, MVA, MVA rating of uh, the equipment, the voltage rating of the equipment, the current rating, the frequency uh, rating of the equipment, the horsepower rating, the X over R ratio, the impedance, and the number of phases. You can, because you know sometimes you're gonna have a single phase and sometimes you're gonna have a three phase, uh, so you need to indicate uh, the number of phases. Uh, 
Typical equipment data for protective relay devices, breakers, and fuses. Um, it's uh, the existing settings, very important. And uh, also for breakers, uh, you can obtain the existing settings uh, for the solid state uh, tripping device. The total of fault clearing time for the breaker. You know, we have a different fault clearing time two cycles, and three cycles, five cycles, and eight cycles. And the uh, TCC curves uh, and uh, ampere rating for the tripping units and uh, the frame size. Uh, for these uh, breakers, especially you know the low voltage uh, power breakers, and also the trip units, then uh, the type of enclosure that uh, these uh, equipments are located, and uh, the distances between the electrodes, that is uh, the distances between the phases, then the ground type, you know, is it solid, solidly grounded, resistance grounded, then the expected working distance. Next, uh, as we continue with the data collection, so let's start. Uh, Take a look at uh, in general what are the parameters that needs to be collected on an equipment. The first one is an MBA rate. The next one is a uh, voltage. The next one is current. The next one is a uh, frequency, horsepower, X over R ratio, impedance, and um, data can be collected on protective relay devices, breakers, and fuses. Right? Okay. So um, data on existing settings. That is, uh, you need uh, the relay technicians, and the relay technicians can help you collect um, uh, the current settings. Uh, you know the basically can have access uh, to these uh, uh, relays, uh, that is a uh, microprocessor relay, solid state relays, uh, to obtain the current um, settings of uh, this uh, protection device. And also the type of breakers, uh, the existing settings of a uh, solid state tripping device, and also the total for clearing time, that is, uh, is it a two cycle, three cycle, five cycle, or eight cycle. Then you also need a TCC, and you also need an ampere rating of uh, the tripping units and the frame size of uh, Especially, this is much applicable to low voltage power circuit breakers and uh, the trip units and uh, the enclosure that uh, these breakers are located and the gap distance of uh, the electrodes. The gap distance basically it's uh, the distances between the phases phase one, phase A, phase B, phase C. As we continue with the data collections, right, okay, um, you will need a short circuit analysis and you need data and modeling on the following that is for utility section. Right? You need uh, data on generators, you need data on motors, you need data on transformers, you need data on cables, you need data on bus ducts, you need data on transmission lines, you need data on medium voltage switch gear, you need data on low voltage power circuit breakers, power switch gears, and also you need data on motor control centers. Right? And as you come downstream, sometimes you need data on uh, low voltage panels. You also need uh, data on protective devices, and, and to obtain uh, data on protective devices, um, you need an existing one line, existing three lines, you need an existing uh, schematics, you need an existing technical data sheet, then you need an existing uh, protective relay coordination studies. Protective relay coordination studies is most uh, mostly done uh, during uh, the design stage, or you can obtain, if uh, the plant has been upgraded, modified, then you can obtain the latest uh, protective relay coordination studies. Next is uh, the manufacturer's uh, TCC. Next is uh, protective relays, and you need to obtain the type, the model number, and the manufacturer of the protective relays. The current settings, the current transformer ratio, the pickup settings, the delay settings, and the type of curve. And now uh, we have uh, different types of curves. We have uh, inverse, very inverse, and extremely inverse, and the time down. For the fuse, uh, you need the type, the model number, and the manufacturer. You need the ampere rating, and the voltage rating, and the peak electrode current, and uh, the minimum melting current. To collect our data on the breaker, you know, um, you need the manufacturer, the voltage rating, the ampere rating, the port clearing time, two cycles or five cycles, the pickup settings, the delay time, delay curve, and um, you need to uh, also ask questions, you know, especially you're, you're coming along with the maintenance uh, technicians, uh, right, and uh, the relay uh, technicians. You need to ask them uh, a lot of questions on the reliability of these breakers. And matter of fact, uh, you can take a deep dive into the maintenance uh, uh, inspection and testing records of the breaker and uh, basically take a look at uh, the testing results. Make sure that uh, uh, the testing results uh, meet uh, the criteria for the reliable operation of the breaker and also for the relay as well. Next, I uh, will uh, take a look at uh, what data needs to be collected on a utility, right? Okay, so the utility is your source, right? Your source of 
your short circuit, right? Okay. So from the utility end, uh, what you do is uh, you need to request that these parameters from your utility provider, right? Or your transmission line provider, right? Okay. So you need an MVA short circuit. You need a single line to ground or three phase uh, short short circuit, right? And uh, the utility usually can provide you your maximum and your minimum, right? If uh, they don't provide you your maximum and the minimum, that is fine. They can give you they can give you the baseline, right? But most often, most of the utilities will give you the maximum MVA short circuit in single line to ground, or the maximum MVA short circuit in three phase, and or the maximum uh, minimum um, MVA short circuit single line to ground or three phase uh, uh, short circuit. On the other hand, they can also give you your short circuit current in amperes, right? And that can be single line to ground or three phase. And it can be maximum or minimum. They will also provide you your X over R ratio. They can also provide you your impedance and uh, the voltage and the frequency. So these are all the parameters that you need to request and they will provide you, okay? On a minimum, they need to provide you uh, the first uh, uh, three and uh, verify uh, the voltage and the frequency. Okay, so um, as you can see, this is a typical example of uh, what uh, uh, the utilities provide, right? Okay, so they provide uh, the voltage level, right? And the MVA short circuit and an X over R ratio, as you can see over here. So they gave the X over R ratio, X, X zero over R zero, that is five over 5.3. And they gave uh, the single line to ground uh, uh, MVA short circuit as 348 MVA. Then the actual uh, positive uh, reactance over uh, the resistance is 4.9. Then they give it the three phase uh, MVA short circuit as 355 MVA. Next, we'll talk about uh, the data that needs to be collected on power transformers, right? Okay, so the first one is, sir. Uh, uh, the MVA, right? Um, so the MVA owner and owner, right? Okay, so you you have, you know, let's say for a two stage, uh, you know, um, power transformer, cooling power transformer. The owner and the owner is the cooling class, right? Okay, so or the owner is oil, um, oil natural. So the oil is flowing naturally without any forcing into it. Then AN is air natural. It means that. Uh, and natural air is flowing around the radiator to take out the heat. There is no fans. ONAF, on the other hand, ONAF means that the oil is flowing naturally. Then AF means there's forced air. That is uh, the fans, the transformers utilizing stage cooling fans to cool the radiator to achieve the, to remove the heat, the required heat, uh, so to meet uh, the required uh, temperature rise. Uh, of uh, the transform. Next is uh, the current, uh, the full load current uh, on the high side and on the low side. Then the high side are voltage and the low side voltage. The cooling class, uh, on and or on up, the frequency, the energized tap changer, you know, and uh, that is uh, plus or minus uh, two and a half uh, percent, yeah, most often than not. Then the on load tap changer, that is uh, plus or minus 16 percent. Then a peak impedance, then uh, the vector configuration. Example is DYN1. That means that uh, the high side of the transformer is connected in the delta, and uh, the uh, low voltage side is connected in a Y neutral. Then there's a phase shift between the high side and uh, the low voltage side by 30 degrees. One means 30 degrees. That means that the high side is leading the low voltage side by 30 degrees. You also need uh, the oil temperature rise, and uh, most often than not, uh, most of the transformers are actually 65 degrees Celsius. Next is uh, the winding temperature rise, uh, and uh, most of uh, the transformers is uh, 65 degrees Celsius. Next is uh, the type of mineral oil. Is it uh, uh, regular mineral oil or ester flow? Then the basic insulation level, the uh, BRL. This is uh, what uh, basically uh, the transformer insulation is designed to handle lightning impulse and switching impulse uh, surges. Then uh, the X over R ratio up to the point uh, of uh, location of uh, the transformer. 
Next is uh, data on, on fuse, right? Okay, so for a fuse, uh, this is uh, uh, a typical example. It's uh, you need uh, the manufacturer, the type, the voltage, the size, the TCC curves, the minimum melted current, the model, the interrupting rating that is uh, symmetrical. Then the enclosure type uh, where the fuse uh, is located. So on the right hand side is a typical fuse in uh, the manufacturer, the type, and the style, the voltage, and the size of um, the tubes. This is an example of uh, what uh, you collect. Next, uh, for as we continue on the data collection, right, we'll talk about high voltage circuit breaker. Okay, so for a high voltage circuit breaker, you need uh, the manufacturer, the type of circuit breaker, the voltage, the relay that operates that circuit breaker, right? Okay, so you know that uh, you know basically you, uh, the output from the circuit relay is what operates uh, the trip coil. Or the close call of uh, the circuit breaker, so you need uh, uh, documentation on that relay. Then you also need uh, the operating time of the circuit breaker. Is it a two cycle, three cycle, five cycle, or eight cycle? For most often than not, high voltage circuit breakers is is a two cycle uh, breaker, and medium voltage is uh, three cycle and uh, five cycle. You also need a uh, symmetrical interrupting rating and asymmetrical interrupting rating. Asymmetrical interrupting rating is usually the peak. Is uh, or maximum uh, uh, short circuit uh, rating of uh, the circuit breaker. Next is a low voltage circuit breaker, right? Okay, so for a low voltage circuit breaker, we have different types. We have a low voltage power circuit breaker, uh, insulated case circuit breaker, modded case circuit breaker, and what you need to collect is the manufacturer information. You need uh, is the manufacturer the type, the voltage, the trip type, and uh, the current transformer and uh, the frame size. So for a modded case circuit breaker, right? Okay, and which has a, a thermomagnetic trip, right? Okay, so you need to obtain all the data on it. You know, for mostly magnetic component is found in is the instantaneous portion of it, and uh, mostly found in motor circuits, right? And uh, fixed uh, thermo and uh, fixed uh, magnetic is found in lightning circuits, and uh, fixed uh, thermo and adjustable thermo is found in uh, panel boards. And uh, adjustable thermo and magnetic is found in some breakers. A matter of fact, uh, fixed thermo and uh, adjustable and magnetic is found in panel balls. This needs to be corrected. Then the operating time of uh, the circuit breaker, then the symmetrical interrupting and asymmetrical interrupting. Right. Okay, so now let's talk about the trick type, right? Okay, for, so for solid state um, Trick. Uh, we, you need uh, the long time pickup, the long time delay, the short time pickup, the short time delay, the instantaneous pickup, and the ground fault pickup, and the ground fault delay. So on the right side is an example of uh, what you need. As uh, so you can see over here, we have uh, uh, this uh, motor, uh, uh, motor circuit, uh, circuit breaker, right? Okay, so you have uh, the manufacturer, the type, the frame size, the maximum voltage rating. Uh, the thermal trip, right? Then uh, instantaneous uh, trip amps, then to the instantaneous uh, rating, interrupting rating, and that is 18 kA, right? And on the other hand, uh, is how this uh, solid state uh, tripping is uh, basically the long time pickup, the long time delay, the short time pickup, the short time delay, how these settings are incorporated. Next, we'll talk about the high voltage disconnect switches, right? Okay, so as you know, the, for the high voltage disconnect switch, uh, we have uh, different uh, types of switches. We have vertical break, we have center people, double break, and there are many other uh, different types. So what you need is uh, the manufacturer, the type, the voltage, uh, the frequency, the basic insulation level, the continuous current rating, and the symmetrical rating and the asymmetrical rating. For other switches, uh, you need uh, the manufacturer, the type, voltage, the current, is it a fuse switch, and the short circuit rating. Next, we'll talk about the data for the switch here data uh, collection. And uh, first, uh, let's take an example for the medium voltage switch here. So you need uh, the manufacturer, the type, the voltage, the frequency, the basic insulation level, uh, continuous uh, current rating, the symmetrical interrupting rating, the asymmetrical interrupting rating, then the gap distance. So the gap distance is the uh, distance between phase A, phase B, phase C for the bus, uh, horizontal bus, and the vertical bus. Then you also need the normal cables uh, that comes to the incoming breaker and all other feeder breakers. You also need a uh, data or the data that you know 
is for the income and the outgoing feeders, then you can also sketch uh, one line of the uh, switch gear. Very, very important because um, with all the income and the, uh, the feeder breakers, the auxiliary depart, uh, 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 compartment, what, the, why, what is the reason why you need uh, this? Is to compare what you have in the field with what you have on the drawings. And most often than not, you'll be surprised that um, um, additional cubicle sections have been added to these switch gears and the one lines uh, have not been updated. So this is the best time to identify such um, uh, deviations and uh, implement uh, the required uh, corrective uh, uh, corrections uh, that uh, is needed. Next, uh, you know, it's uh, the gap distances between uh, the electrodes. I think I made mention for that. Uh, and uh, the criteria for low voltage switch gears is 32 millimeters. And uh, that for motor control sensors is uh, 25 uh, millimeters. And uh, the cable data, the size, the type, insulation types, and then the number of power conductors. Now let's talk about the generator, right? Okay, so for the generator, you need uh, the manufacturer, you need uh, the MVA rating, you need the voltage, the frequency, the basic insulation level, and uh, the full load current rating. Then the reactances, you need the synchronous reactances, right? You need uh, the transient reactances and um, the sub-transient reactances. And uh, the zero sequence reactants. Uh, then the time constants. Remember the time constants, we have uh, uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, time constants. And, we have uh, the synchronous uh, time constants. We have uh, the transient time constant. We have uh, the sub-transient constants. Uh, actually, uh, you will need this uh, for a further study, the transient stability study. Uh, that is, you know, but most often best uh, to collect uh, this data uh, when you are in the field. You also need uh, the X over R ratio. For models, right, as you know that uh, for most of uh, these industrial uh, facilities, uh, there's a lot of our motors and matter of fact, a larger motors. Okay, so uh, to perform our uh, arc flash uh, studies, uh, usually uh, motors that are greater than 50 horsepower, very important now to uh, collect uh, um, uh, that data, you know. Uh, motors that are below 50 horsepower, usually you um, ignore uh, the modeling of that. So, for motors that are uh, greater than uh, 50 horsepower, what you need is uh, uh, the manufacturer, the motor size, uh, horsepower or kilowatts, the voltage, the frequency, the speed, the full load current, and the MIMA code letter. The MIMA code letter is basically provides an input to your lock load of current. So we have a uh, MIMA code letters A, B, C, D, E. Now let's talk about the cable data. What data you need to collect uh, for cables, right? Okay, the first one is the manufacturer, the size of the conductor. Uh, the conductor material, uh, the length of the cable, material of, of the cable, the insulation type, uh, the number of conductors per phase, and uh, the uh, number of conductors per cable, and the type of raceway, is it a bus uh, cable or a conduit, and the, the equipment uh, that uh, is connected to the cable. Now let's talk about bus duct data collection, right? Okay, so for the bus duct, what you need is uh, the manufacturer. The voltage, the current, the short circuit rating, symmetrical and asymmetrical, the frequency, the length of the busway, equipment connected to the busway. Uh, most often than not, a uh, bus doctor uh, impedance is very, very low, you know, quite close to zero. So basically, you don't need any data on uh, the impedance. Now let's uh, move to what data you need to collect on protective release, right? So for the protective release, uh, you need uh, the manufacturer. Is it a Schweitzer? Is it a, a GE? General Electric, is it a Siemens, is it an ADB, there are many, many more out there, okay, and the type of uh, uh, protective release, uh, and a typical example is uh, Schweitzer SEL745, Schweitzer SEL845, this is uh, used for uh, transformer protection, differential protection, and uh, uh, Schweitzer SEL750, that is a feeder management uh, relay, usually this is used for the income section of a uh, switch gear. Then Schweitzer SEL551, this is used uh, for a feeder, you know, protection. You know, so if you have a feeder uh, that are going out of a uh, switch here, this is a um, relay that uh, you use. Then you have uh, the Schweitzer SEL710, this is a mo for mo motor protection. Then uh, uh, this is one of uh, the best uh, relays uh, for motor protection that I've, um, I've, I've seen. You know, in addition to the GEs, uh, the GE469, the GE, um, 869. Those are very, 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 
could uh, microprocessor and uh, multifunction uh, protective layers. Next is uh, the current transformer ratio, very, very important. You know, the CT ratio for the phase, right? And the CT ratio for neutral program. Then the latest testing report for that reader, very, very important. Then, uh, uh, what function does the protective relay uh, provide? Is it a phase or neutral or ground? And uh, is it a instantaneous or time over current? Instantaneous is uh, RC device 50, and time over current is uh, RC device 51. Pick up settings uh, for instantaneous, etc. Then the time delay and the type of uh, delay curve that is being used is it a definite, inverse, very inverse, uh, extremely inverse? Now let's talk about uh, the app flash incident energy configuration and the required uh, PPE, right? Okay, so after you've done all your modeling, all your simulation, uh, you do your short circuit uh, simulation first, then after that uh, you do, you perform uh, the app flash status, okay? So your app flash uh, uh, categorization is uh, category zero and uh, it's 1.2 calories per square centimeters. And uh, basically that defines your app flash uh, Category one is four calories per square centimeters. Category two is eight calories per square centimeters. Category three, 25 calories uh, per square centimeters. Category four is 40 calories per square centimeters. Okay, so based on your simulation, right, and uh, your obtained uh, uh, incident energy, you can categorize uh, if uh, your incident energy is less than uh, four calories per square centimeters, then basically your PPA calculation is uh, category one. Next is a uh, shock boundaries, right? Okay, and this uh, comes into play when you have uh, open panels, right? Uh, let's say you have open um, uh, uh, cubicle. Okay, so we have uh, different uh, categories. We have uh, the limited uh, um, approach, and basically, this is when you have an unqualified personnel, right? A personnel that is have no, uh, doesn't have the skill to perform uh, the work, but that uh, must be escorted. Next is uh, the restricted approach. In this zone, uh, an unqual unqualified person is not allowed, right? Only qualified persons are allowed. Next is a prohibited approach. Prohibited approach is a qualified person is allowed, but is required to implement a safe work practice. Okay, so on the right is a typical example of a flash stickers that must be put, you know, on the equipment. Right. Okay. So as you can see, um, the label indicates uh, uh, the incident energy. So that is the flash uh, hazard, 7.4 calories per square centimeters, and uh, that is uh, your up flash incident energy and flash hazard at 18 inches. Then your up flash boundary uh, that defines uh, 1.2 calories per square centimeters. Uh, that is uh, your distance. Then the shock hazard. So the shock hazard basically defines the voltage level, right? You need to define um, the voltage level. Then your distances for your limited approach, your restricted approach is all defined. Then you also need uh, the dates that uh, the stickers were uh, performed, the, um, uh, uh, the um, simulation uh, studies was performed and uh, the stickers uh, were printed, very, very important. Next um, is a typical uh, data um, or report formats. Okay, so the report that uh, you print after you have performed your simulation studies and uh, comprises of, of this, at least it should have this, uh, the equipment type and uh, the protection relay uh, that uh, you are utilizing. The um, gap distances for arc, bus uh, voltage fall, bus arc and fall, the trip time and the port clearing time, the arc flash boundary, the working distance, the incident energy, I square T, based on IEEE 1584. Now, this is the last slide, okay? We'll talk about mitigation techniques, okay? So, if you run your simulation and you determine that, uh, you know, you're not meeting the requirements, so, uh, what do you need to do? You know, that is what uh, NFPA uh, 70E uh, indicates, that you need to implement mitigation uh, techniques and um, we'll go through the typical mitigation techniques uh, that is out there in the industry. The first one you can do is uh, during the design stage, right? Okay, after you uh, run your um, app flash studies, right? You can implement a current limiting uh, reactors, right? And uh, these uh, reactors are airport type that 
does not allow does does not um, allow saturation, right? It doesn't because you know it's airborne, right? Compared to the core type, right? Okay. This next is uh, ultra fast airborne detection, right? Okay. So these uh, um, uh, airborne uh, detecting devices are very fast. Okay. So basically, it will uh, detect uh, basically the incident energy faster and uh, basically take it to ground. Next is iron barriers, uh, you know. Um, that uh, also basically it's a uh, more of uh, administrative way and uh, also engineering piece of it uh, to prevent uh, exposure uh, to personnel. Next is uh, adding um, insulation, right? Okay, it's because you know uh, bare bus bars, right? That are shown on inside the switch here. You don't have, a, have you don't want to have it exposed. So adding. Um, uh, insulation to these uh, uh, horizontal bus bars and uh, vertical uh, bus bars uh, uh, helps uh, to basically prevent uh, short circuit from occurring. And uh, the metal clutter uh, switch gear types are very good at it. By uh, they have a lot of uh, insulation wrapped around uh, the uh, bus bars, uh, both uh, the you know the horizontal bus bars and uh, the vertical bus bars that goes through uh, the vertical bus bars that goes through the cubicles, right? Okay. Then. The grounding schemes, all right. Okay, so um, um, let's say we, we have a different types of our grounding schemes. We have solidly grounded, um, low impedance grounded, the hi uh, high impedance grounded. Okay, so uh, the high impedance grounding basically limits uh, the up and the ground faults, right? Okay, so as you limit uh, uh, the ground faults with a high impedance, right? Uh, basically, you mitigate um, uh, the up uh, and the ground fault and also mitigate uh, the incident, uh, consequential incident uh, energy as such. But uh, the caveat uh, that basically comes into play is uh, the over voltage conditions that you have to encounter. So that requires uh, adding more accounting for that during the design stage, uh, adding, having the required uh, insulation to withstand over voltages uh, due to different grounding schemes uh, that you implement. Next is uh, implementing local protection and upstream protection. Okay, so upstream protection, it's uh, you know, your income, you should have a uh, uh, faster you know, uh, protection scheme and um, uh, another example is your local protection right okay so local protection scheme is a uh, maintenance uh, uh, switches that are utilized uh, and uh, basically that uh, basically provides a faster uh, protection scheme and protect uh, the workers uh, when they are working on the switch here next is a selective zone interlocking scheme right okay so this is another faster um, up fault uh, detection scheme basically that uh, uh, basically the protection relay that is in close proximity to where the port is located is the one that is going to uh, basically see the port faster uh, through um, communication uh, uh, who, uh, they call it a GOSE uh, communication schemes uh, G O O S E that basically helps uh, the relay that is quite closer to the port uh, to see the port faster and basically um, uh, initiate a tripping command uh, to isolate uh, uh, the fault. Next is uh, the fast bus differential protection. This is also um, another um, faster differential protection use, utilizing a high impedance uh, protection scheme. And um, next is our uh, maintenance arc fault reduction switch, uh, and that is what uh, I indicated um, earlier on as a local protection uh, scheme that can be utilized uh, that protects our. Uh, um, uh, the worker when maintenance is uh, basically being performed on a switch here. Next is uh, basically modifying the relay uh, clearing times, okay, to make uh, the, uh, the protective relays uh, clear the force faster. And uh, as you clear the force faster, you reduce uh, the incident uh, uh, energy. Next is uh, adding fiber optical lightning sensors, okay, and uh, the Schweitzer relays have that capability. Where you can have a fiber optic uh, lighting uh, uh, wires uh, sensors uh, that are basically wired uh, in all parts of the switch here and integrated to the Schweitzer really to be able to detect uh, arcing faults uh, faster and uh, trip uh, um, and, and provide the required uh, isolation. Next is uh, having vented plumes uh, channels uh, in the switch here and uh, basically that uh, helps uh, to vent uh, the arc fault, the huge uh, arc fault uh, that occurs. And that basically provides uh, the um, um, enclosure from basically uh, exploding. Next is uh, having a remote uh, racking mechanism, right? Okay, so basically that helps uh, their uh, worker, the uh, 
maintenance worker that is working on the switch gear to be out far away from uh, the switch gear. Next is a remote switching, right? Okay, you can have a SCADA system uh, that can basically, the wiring goes through an, an RTU to a SCADA system or DC system that helps you to switch in and out the breaker from a remote location without having um, a maintenance worker or operational operating operational worker in close proximity to the switch gear. Next is uh, uh, PPE. That is uh, the last uh, result. Uh, it's having the required uh, PPE and following the required uh, working distance. Thank you so much uh, for your listening years and uh, basically look out for my next uh, presentation. Thank you so much. If you like uh, this presentation, don't forget to select a like uh, uh, button in YouTube and subscribe to my channel in YouTube. Thank you so much.